You can tell it's a hackathon because we're already running quite behind schedule. Welcome to Digital Sizzle um, Art Hackathon 2. Um, I hope you're all going to have a great weekend. We're uh, really overwhelmed with the response that we've had and the amount of people that have come tonight uh, and for the weekend. Uh, we can't wait to see what you guys come up with. There's the terrain data here on the open data maps. Um, I've brought two leap motion devices. You guys probably know them. They're those crazy wavy hand in the air and you get data. My kind of half idea is to take the data, maybe it's CERN or maybe it's the wind, and extrude it into art, right? I'd just like to have the opportunity to explore what data is out there. Um, if somebody wants to build a, a thing where you can basically raise your hand and flood London, I think you could do it really easily in JavaScript. We're using an EEG headset to record brainwave data and producing generative music and visuals. So, on that note, yeah. shall, we, shall we eat? The first one was awesome. I mean, last year we were in Mozilla. This year uh, we're in South Place Hotel. Five star hotel, it's amazing. And uh, great food, great digs, great surroundings. Just general awesomeness. We've had some great pictures earlier on tonight, some really interesting ideas. Mm. Everything from like printing out broken promises from the government on acid ink in a printer. To... So it destroys the paper. So we had, we had various people wanting to do something around the NSA. It's quite a hot topic right now. Yep. Um, yep. What else? We had some crazy ideas. I'm here because I love the three bits. Well, I'm here because I love the three bits. I just want to see people doing really interesting, innovative stuff. And I think the whole point and the reason we set it up last year was we don't know what the outcome is. I am excited about seeing data visualized. Art is beautiful, but when we get to add like what we can do with like laptops and computers and what hackers can do, it's going to be amazing. So that's why I'm here. I'm here to make something, I want to make something really interesting and something kind of uh, interactive but also fun and playful, um, kind of like a, a wall installation is what I'm going to be doing. Um, last year I did some fish, uh, tuna fish, so um, this year is actually slightly less extravagant and I'm not using live animals uh, for better or for worse, but um, what I've got is I've got, Novation have really kindly sent me 16 launch pads, which are these MIDI instruments and I'm going to put them in a grid of 4x4. Four four. Team Hog, Team ha Hand of God. Basically, um, we're thinking, kind of tying in with how water level rising is taking place at the moment. Uh, year on year, we're going to allow people to kind of flood different topographies. Um, and hopefully, after just using that cool bit of equipment, we're going to do it so that users can actually rise the sea level in times with what their hands actually doing. So um, yeah, stay tuned. There's going to be actual water in an actual tank. Yeah, so, so you're going to actually have water city. flooding a real city with your hand up and down. We're working on something called Uber Watch. That's the working title. The basic idea is we monitor all the internet traffic that's going on around here and presented in readable form to the people using a lovely red box that Mark so, just created. Yeah. There's no there's no water involved this year. There may be water. There's no moving parts. Is it? Some sort of game involving connects and we wanted real fire. But I don't think um, I don't think we're, we're allowed. Because last year I wasn't allowed water. And if I wasn't allowed water, then I'm definitely not gonna be allowed fire. How do we get our hands on a house? We need, we need a house that big. Like, you must have seen one. Like a top of a doll's house. Tower of London. Who can see the building the Tower of London tomorrow? That is literally... Wow. Um, 
So four metres would take us up to like what there? Yeah. yeah. To the and the great thing about it, it's very low, the Tower of London. Yeah. Yeah. It's like in you know, like a moat. If it just goes up to like the doorstep and everyone's yeah, like, and yeah, yeah. pretty pants, yeah, but then yeah, you, yeah. you look at the juxtaposition the of that and the yeah, yeah. and you're like, okay, that's completely underwater. But the reality of how we can actually get a model of that, oh, that is, it's another question, yeah. is what's tough. Whereas right now we have a way of having a model of the Tower of London. But I don't like the Tower of London. <laughs> My idea is that you would um, have a sort of a, a webcam where it processes people's faces and then tries to match those with other photos so that you go up to a webcam and it actually shows you a picture of somebody else's face in the same position as yours with the same um, facial orientation. Yeah, that's the idea. I'm fixing my password with the password uh, and then turn it into an object. Yeah. Obviously, that's what I like about that's it. That's a big come and get me. That's right? what I like about it's it. It's like, here's big side. This is an encoding of my PIN number. The idea is that uh, I'm going to make a series of physical objects that encode uh, personal information. And what I've made is a visual language where uh, I can encrypt a uh, a piece of text, in this case my four character pin, using a more strong password. And then that turns it into this visual representation of it. And um, if you look here, I've made a kind of representation for each character of the resulting uh, encoded uh, password. Um, and each one of those gets turned into a series of triangles and rectangles. And out of that algorithm pops 45 characters, and that turns into a 9 by 5 representation of that, um, that piece of information. So the idea is that uh, I could take any information from anyone and turn it into a, a kind of physical manifestation of a secret. I can't see, I can't see that um, on these. That's that's the little Yeah, it goes off the top there. And this goes on this bit here. This is designed for ages eight plus. Um by our team. It's really got to go. I'm difficult with it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with the whole model making part of it. We've not even started hacking it yet. Yeah. Um, what we're aiming to do is flood uh, different cities based upon trends of rising water across the world. And uh, so we've been able to pick up a tiny kid's miniature water pump that we're hoping will be able to pump water into one kind of landscape that will make probably either the Maldives or something you know, like London at the moment. And uh, yeah, this is the beginning of that. Check that out. That was pretty cool. We're yeah. gonna start with four and then branch it out. Where are you gonna put them? <laughs> <laughs> On a board. You need a full table, basically. Yeah, it's gonna be a four by four, and I'll probably head out and get some wood to like take mounting. Yeah. And what are you gonna do with them? Lots of different modes. There's gonna be lots of different modes. So um, I can. Is it gonna be? Is it gonna be music? There will be some music, but it won't just be music. There will be lots of just like lights, and then maybe like a wave. So you press this, and it like waves across the board. Okay. Um, but then making it so that there's. It will be hopefully fun to play. We are trying to come up with a name of our idea. We've got a big team of about seven of us. Yeah. So we need to make sure we've kind of got something everyone's happy with. We uh, medley. Medley is good. Well, we kind of have mashy festo, which is a mashup of tweets and a manifesto. Yeah. So we're just trying to think if we can come up with a better name than that. We're trying to build a creepy phone that rings when you're not expecting it and uh, and when you pick it up there's nothing there or it tells you to shush or it connects you through to the NSA or something. We're not really sure yet, but um, we're basically trying to build a phone that doesn't behave the way you expect phones to behave. 
and um, right now we've got it uh, to the point where we have a dial tone, um, but we're uh, struggling to get it to do anything more than that, so we'll see. We're, we're going to have an IVR um, so that you can actually report your neighbour as a terrorist. Thank you for calling the NSA. Please uh, listen carefully as some of our options have changed. To report your neighbour as a terrorist, press 1. If you think your neighbour has been accessing the Pirate Bay, press 2. <laughs> <laughs> so basically we're going to ride bicycles and make music together. That's the long and short of it. So each cyclist has a device attached to their bike. We're just doing it wirelessly right now and each bike will be tagged to a certain tone. And right now we're working with a music box so it's going to um, so if you're riding fast, I might ride fast as well, so then, then the speed of the, the beat or the rhythm is going to go faster. It's a way of um, divulging your, your guilt, your confessions, um, in almost um, a mechanical um, medium where you would text um, your secrets to our phone number we've already set up <laughs> that would then put it through a printing device um, onto um, a channel where you would be able to view and actually visualize this this secret or this this guilt this thing that you've been carrying with you and get it off your chest um, and then actually be able to watch it burn right before your eyes <laughs> so that it's like a religious experience where you're letting go uh, this is a demo of what the Pi can do in terms of 3D real-time rendering. The plan is to use the EEG data coming in to modify a sort of a shape like a grid, get people down into baseline meditation level so that when we uh, throw music at them their reaction is more to, you know more apparent or more yeah. extreme. More measurably different because you yeah. know that it's not other things that are going on around them that are engaging them but just the music that they suddenly hear. So, so we're basically going to reinterpret or interpret their interpretation of the music. Just go bam and see the brain just go and <laughs> fireworks going off in the brain basically. So I mean there's a fair amount of work left to do. So the way, the first thing I need to get it to do is so that we can tell it where ones are positioned. So like when it first starts up it doesn't do anything then we press this one first, that one, so that it knows where they all are because that's one thing that it doesn't at the moment, which is why it's doing a bit of the wave in a weird form. The beach front they could do. Yeah. Or like a promenade along the, along the I think beach. That, I think we should have a middle. Not, not a middle high street. You think we should have a high street? Yeah. Or well, maybe we should have an offset high street so then something different could happen like over here. Yeah. Maybe a car park. A, a car park or like a, a curve on the road on the road. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting something, right? Okay, yeah. And, uh, believe it or not. We're making uh, a model city in the moment. Um, it's meant to be representative as opposed to a replica, uh, given the constraints we have at the moment. Um, so we're going to have a church, a courtyard, we're going to have a beachfront, a promenade. There's going to be you know, people going about their daily business. We've got our own little Nelson's column over here. We're representing the highest point on the Maldives, and we're going to have some palm trees set on the Maldives. Um, the highest point is actually only 2.8 metres. So we're going to see the whole of the Maldives flooded over, and you can see the effect that that's going to have similarly on you know more of the developed world over here. Um, but yeah, we're just creating that city at the moment. So we're going to get sprayed white, and I hope it's going to look a lot better than it is at the moment. But um, we're on the right path. The, what, 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 hang on, what made you think it wasn't going to be our club in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> Do we need to laugh in the background. <laughs> <laughs> The printer works! It's printing! Well done, Sam! Well done, Sam! Sam! Well, yeah. <laughs> Sam gave us the power. Sam gave us the printing.
The whole bit has been simply the calibration. Long. Now we need to actually work out what we're going to do with it. Well, we wanted to make a massive grid of lights, um, and now we can literally, I can say, turn on a light at X coordinate, Y coordinate, across the whole thing. I basically, my code is now one big launch pad. You've set up the grid now, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly yeah, that. Yeah. Mainly because I was chatting to what I classify as normal people, mm. and some of the stuff that I thought was the least interesting, they thought was the most interesting. Oh, is there a sweeter sound? Now we're getting lead motion to work. So this is all going to happen. Tides up, tides down. The problem with this, right, is there's now photographic evidence when we get the fucking yank all over the floor. Okay. Because we've got to put quite a bit of white paint on this. <coughs> yeah, we are. It's definitely not photographing it. Beard time going now. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. Yeah, do you like that to block or something? Like this sucks. Uh, it's like taking off handcuffs, I'd imagine. I'd have been arrested. Is there a mark there? I hope it was worth it. The digital version was always the starting point. Um, so the end products are a quilt, prints, and um, a laser cut. So I think they're time consuming in different ways. This is about handicraft, so in a way we wanted something that was The general principle is the four layers respond to four different colors, so there's enough information in it to uh, represent a character. And so each one of these characters represents the kind of cryptographic cryptographic encoding of the information that it contains, but nobody knows what it is. Because on the back, uh, you can just about see, here it is, it says, you probably won't, you won't hit this on camera, I doubt, what is the encrypted message that defines this image? So I'm leaving it as a mystery, and then when the demos happen, um, the mystery will be revealed. Oh, to get it demoable, I don't think there's much we need to do. We've got the printer working, we can run it over this and we can turn this by hand. Our main issue is that if it was set up for a duration, if the paper was hovering over our heating element for a certain period of time, if it would, you know, start to burn. If it would be open flames, which obviously would be very dangerous, so... But I don't think, I don't think that would happen, I thought it was very unlikely. I think we've got, yeah, an hour and a half, maybe. Yeah. But we're just starting to code. Um, uh, <laughs> But it's good, we, we're, we're going <laughs> to... It's fine, we've done the hard bits, it's just, it's just a little, small, small technical uh, rounding of corners left. We've connected the Leap Motion to the computer and to Python and we found a way to uh, access all of the kind of input from that in, in Python. Now we need to communicate with Python to the Arduino 
and turn on the motors when the right motions are given. Things are really starting to progress. We've done these are some tests here, look, no secrets to share. But of course that's all going to change later on when people want to let go of their old guilt, maybe an old lie they told. They want to just, you know, have a sort of cathartic experience. Let go of that thing they've been holding on to. See it materialise in front of their eyes. It would be burnt. Oh no! Oh! Oh! Okay. And. <laughs> Boom! Boom! Celebrations. I have no idea what just happened. Boom! What just happened? We've managed to activate the pumps using the leap motion. So... Hand of God. Hand of God. Look, he's making it happen. Instant. We need to reiterate that a little bit more to make it a little bit more impressive, but the key thing is it works. And um, that's been a little bit of a long time coming. Right, first of all, big round of applause to all of you who took part this weekend. Thank you very much. Here is our prototype. It's, it's very lovely, official and red and terrifying. Um, these devices would be provided to all establishments that provide any wireless information technologies. So that we have them in cafes and bars and hotels. We wanted to take, it, take the projected rise in sea levels across the world, um, across the next hundred or so years, and to try and make that a little bit more real. So we built a model um, with some things we're going to a little bit later. Um, and more than that, we wanted to make it, everyone understand that they really do have an impact every day and a choice of what's happening with this. And so actually you control the flood with uh, your hand, with your hand of God. By utilizing Twilio, we are able to have you guys text in all your secrets. So get texting if you haven't already, but we've got some really good ones here. Um, woo! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then um, we're able to bring them out on this live feed, a stream of consciousness as, as such, and um, you can then watch them burn. Uh, we thought it would be interesting to uh, take someone who's experiencing art and then the abstraction layer would be the, their own experience of it. So we're going to have someone, we'll uh, have to blindfold them and play some music to them in headphones. And then using the uh, read of how their brain is actually interpreting that art, we're going to produce another set of music and visuals that they can't hear while they're doing it. So uh, it's uh, kind of akin to process art. They can't actually see or hear the output of uh, what's going on. They're just going to happily kind of have to sit there and... Uh, that's my brain now, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is actually ge music generated by the brainwaves. So we get a procedurally generated set of beats and synths. I wanted to make a massive grid of them so that it's all one massive one. Um, so I started off with this uh, ripple effect that um, is just simply so that I knew when each one was positioned like, and that they could all interact with each other. Um, and they are musical instruments by trade, so we had to add some kind of sound in there, which is a simple pebble drop, because uh, Steph said, uh, I think it was on either last night, um, something about that they were, it was very peaceful and serene, um, and it kind of is, so uh, it worked quite well. And we added various like modes to it. Wouldn't it be interesting if you could take some information and encode it visually as an image in a way that it looked like a thing you could buy in Ikea? Uh, wouldn't that be ace? You could hide stuff in, in full view of everybody and no one would know what it was. Seriously, I'm not joking, I just took my pen number and I encoded it. Um, it looks like this, guys, over here, this one. <laughs> okay. And I'm a quilt maker, so I thought, I will make a quilt. And instead of using a pin number, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a secret. So this is my secret, encrypted, and then coded in our visual language, and then cut into pieces of fabric, and then sewed and ironed and all of this with a lot of help um, from people. <laughs> but yes, in the last 20 hours.
we didn't really ever expect to, A, it to be this big, or B, to be as successful as it has been. And it is, as someone who kind of flits around the, the sides of the beers like a sort of shitty sideburn, um, <laughs> it really means a lot that you keep doing this and you keep kind of getting involved and you keep hacking and you keep doing better and better things. And it is genuinely amazing and we are consistently grateful. We love it. We want to see more. In fact, I want to see it on the streets and I want to use it. Um, is Tandem. I think Tandem is an amazing potential application for safety. So, um, big up Tandem. Um, the second really feeds into my egotistical nature um, and also features uh, something I thought was vaporware until they told me my credit card had been cancelled and I needed to update it. Um, and that's Hand of God using the leap motion to drown us all. Um, and I thought that was just a very interesting sort of concept about not only global warming but also trying to drown people. Um, so, I mean, there's, there are obviously some technical limitations around the pump, but I think there's something very, very interesting to be explored there. Um, so, uh, special mention to Hand of God. Give it up. Stand up. Come on, Hand of God. Stand up. Rise to your feet, sir. So, in third place, but not third, obviously. But in third place is, I need to remember how to pronounce this, is... And I think we all enjoyed it, and I enjoyed it because it seemed to be humorous and uh, relevant. Um, is is Mashafesto in third? In second place, with a daring, audacious, yet beautifully executed hack, it's cryptographics.io. And so we come to the winner. Drum roll, please, drum roll. In life, some of you will be pimps and some of you will be dicks. But we all need in our life the great and beautiful cocks that is the Citizens Communication of Safety Bureau.